Shannon, I'm PJ. Welcome to Games Overboard. I'm Shannon. And uh, today we are reviewing Party Wanted. Dun, dun, dun. So this is a prototype type, prototype copy. Uh, some of the things that could change. Definitely the box will look different. What? I, I think it looks good the way it is. <laughs> this is a party slash cooperative card game drinking game. Yep. And uh, goes up to seven players. We had enough for five. Yes, we did. And uh, we had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. First, let's cut to me uh, explaining how the game plays. Hey everyone, so here's the game set partially set up. I wanted to show you how to set it up fully, uh, but I also want to run through all the different parts of the game. So let's talk about these really quick. First off are the hero decks. Uh, these are your character cards. They all have the same back up, backing. Each character has its own symbol as well. Uh, and it even says diagonally uh, in the background, fighter, fighter, fighter. So I know this is the fighter card, um, or the fighter deck, I should say. So there are your hero decks. Then there is the encounter deck. The encounter deck will tell you to do certain things. Um, this one says add one utility card to your hero deck. Utility cards are found in here, and it'll say at the top, utility, or um, here's armor chest, which is armor, class, we have weapons, uh, defense, attack, all kinds of good stuff in there. So the encounter deck will tell you to do something. Sometimes it'll say draw a card. Sometimes it will be uh, you get minus four to your next speed or booty found. We found it made us choose between, between drawing uh, two monsters and picking which one we were going to fight. Things like that. Speaking of monsters, there are two different types of decks here that look similar. So I wanted to show these off. Uh, I was told these may not be final, the, the designs might change, but if not, if these are the final designs, I wanted to show you the differences between them. There are monster cards, and there are boss cards. Monster cards are a little bit darker in tone. They have a different symbol here than bosses. Uh, they have their horns on uh, this face. The face is darker, too. And again, all of the cards have running diagonally. You know, it says monster, 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 monster across. And then this says boss, 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 boss across. So it's an easy way to distinguish these two. They do look similar from a distance. Uh, but wanted you to be aware of those. So the way monsters look when you draw one. So the, you're going to go through four levels of uh, this game. And as you do, you'll level up and you'll fight higher levels of these monsters. So it's a very multi-purpose card, which is really neat, and I'll go through these when we talk about combat. Next is the treasure deck. So the treasure deck, you'll see here, uh, has these little gold bars on it, gold ingots, and you get all kinds of great things like crystal amulet, plus one speed, and it's permanent, so it never has to get shoveled back into your deck, it's just always there. Uh, this one, a mini catapult, you may remove one card from your hero deck. So. All kinds of good stuff in, in there. Next are the land cards. Now, they have this lovely pyramid shape on them as their symbol. That is important because the first five cards also, just like your hero deck, which you'll see in a moment here, have these S's on the bottom right. The S means those are your starting cards. And so you want to find these five Shuffle them up, and you're going to line them up in tiers. So you're going to put three on the bottom, two above it to make a pyramid. This is the Pyramid of Chaos that you'll be fighting your way upwards as you play. Now, as you notice, the pyramid is not complete yet. What you want to do then is find a boss a boss card of the level you are. We're starting the game, so we're going to be at level one. So we pick at random one of these bosses. And we just put that down on top. Now our Pyramid of Chaos is complete. Let's make our hero decks. One is already laid out. This is the healer over here. Let's make the fighter deck. First thing you want to do in your fighter deck is 
find four cards. First one is Nemesis. It says Nemesis at the very top there, and it looks almost like a rules overview sheet, but it's not. This is to make the game harder. This is a set of rules just for you to make the game harder. Set this aside. You won't be needing this for your first couple games. You may never need it, because as this being a party game, drinking game, you know, you may not ever want to have the game harder, and that's okay. This game uh, is specifically designed to just have fun with it. So if that means not using the hard rules, great. This game is still a lot of fun. Next, you have two player cards, and they are double-sided. Each one is similar in that they all say fighter. They all have a speed, which is if you're a D&D player, your initiative, and a heart, which is how many HP you have. But they have a different level. And as you notice, these stats here, all these, they change from level 1 to level 2. Everything changes. And so you want to make sure you start with level 1. You can take the 3, 4, 1, just put it off to the side for right now. You won't need that. And lastly, you have a heart tracker. So what you want to do is, uh, this game doesn't have any tokens or uh, any cardboard pieces or wooden pieces that you can lose. So you can take this out to a bar or something and everything is card based. So what you want to do is if your fighter has 12 health, then you're going to put it right underneath that 12. And as you take damage, you're going to just drop, drop it like this and track what your health is. And then if you heal back up, boop, 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 you know, you just track it all the way back up uh, to wherever you need it to be. So for the fighter, you would just line up the 12s like that. And he is set up for his starting hand there. Then, out of your hero deck, you're going to look through to find 10 cards that also have that S on the bottom right hand corner. So all of them have 10 cards. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Make sure I didn't... Yep, okay. So here are my 10 starting cards. The rest of the cards, this is called your build pool. That's going to go off to the side, okay? Of these 10 cards, shuffle them up, deal yourself four, and that will be your starting hand. Now the cards, uh, as I went over just a little bit, there are different versions, there are different types of them, like this one, for example, it, like there's an attack card, you get plus three to your attacks. There's a utility where you get to, this one says, roll again. So discard this card to draw two cards once per combat. So once you, you know, if you were to use this card, you discard it, get two new cards out of your hero deck. Oh, I'm shaking my camera. Out of your hero deck here, not your build pool. Your build pool, you will uh, call other cards from later as you level up or get treasures, things like that, it'll say you can take cards from your build pool and put them into your dis discard pile, just like a typical deck builder would. Uh, you'd put it into your deck, uh, discard pile, and then when you have to reshuffle everything, it goes into your pile, along with all of your other cards, and you have a new hand to start with. But until then, you just have these six cards that you haven't dealt, been dealt yet as your hero deck to draw from. Now, let's get into a phase of the game. Let's say it is the fighter's turn. Fighter's going first this round. The way you play the game is you pick any card from this row, you flip it over, you do what it says, and when you fulfill all the requirements in that card, the next player will flip a card in the next row. You don't have to do every card in one row. You just do one card in a row, then you move on to the next card, do, or next row, and then you do one card there, and then you move on to the boss. And so let's take a look at that. So let's just say I flip over the middle one. So the hero has, or the fighter has flipped over this middle one here, and it is the archery range. Now, there are three parts to a land card. There's the social part, and the drinking, the action part, and the drinking part. Social and uh, drinking are both optional. Action is the only mandatory part. Let's talk about the two optional ones first, because the uh, action phase is usually a combat, and that's the most involved phase of the game. So social, toss this card at a tar target object, and the rest of the party has to throw one of their cards at the same object, 
the closest throw gets one treasure. Now, again, it's optional. You don't have to do that. But if you do, there's a chance you could get a treasure. So, you know, it's, it's always a good thing to, to try the social. Because it always gives you something back. It always, always rewards you. The drinking part, this one says, drink with the hero across from you. So, simple, you know. If you don't want to drink or something like that, then you don't have to do that one. Not a problem. You don't get any penalties for it. You don't get any rewards for doing it. It's just something you can do. Now, the action, it says, draw two encounters and two monsters. Choose one from each type. So, let's take a look at how encounter decks work here. Or encounter cards. Now. Here we have this one, uh, Tis but Flesh Wound, you get negative four to speed in the next battle. Or, considering your options, add one utility card to your hero deck. Obviously, I'm going to pick this one. The other one just gets discarded. This one, I'm going to pick one utility to add to my hero deck. So I'm going to do that right now. So, I'm going to discard that. Look through here for a utility card. I'm not going to read it just for the sake of time here. Let's just say I read it, I like what it's on, what's on it, and I add it into my hero deck. I'm going to put it, so it goes in my discard pile for next time. Now, I do the same thing for monsters. So I draw two monsters and choose one to fight. So here are the two monsters I picked. And let's see here. I am going with the skeleton because he's a lot easier to fight. And I'll explain that in a second here. So we have the skeleton and the skeleton at level one has an attack of five, armor of 10 and speed of nine. Speed, if you're a D&D player, speed is your initiative. Uh, this determines who goes first. So the higher the number, uh, the sooner you go. The skeleton's at nine, so he's going to go after any of us heroes. He's a pretty slow hero, or a pretty slow enemy. This is his AC. You can, uh, in order to hurt the skeleton, you have to beat that number. You cannot tie it. So I would need to do 11 damage to hurt this skeleton. If I don't, if we can't kill the skeleton by the time it's his turn, he's going to hit everyone for five points. And we can defend that, but we have to subtract the amount of damage he does that versus how much we defend. So I have base defense of three on my fighter card. So if I didn't have a defense card, he would deal two damage to me, five minus two. But with this plus two defense, I can block all damage and not take any uh, damage from him. And that's something I might consider doing. But then I won't have that card for later tiers in the pyramid. Now, last thing about monsters is the HP. This is one HP per player. So in a two player game, he has two HP. There, because the healer's over here, fighter's over here. So together, he has two. If I beat his AC and I'm able to deal 11 damage to him, I only deal one point of damage even if I beat it by like 13 points. Uh, that game requires cooperation and teamwork in that way, that you can't just kill the monster on your own. You need everyone else to pitch in and stop it. So let's just say, uh, so let, let's go through a round of fighting here. So I have an attack of two on my fighter, right? Here's my fighter card. I can do two damage. I need to beat 10. So I would need to look at my cards here and I have, I'm going to pull up my hand and bring it up to the camera. I have utility, which is choose attack or defense, double the effects of cards played when chosen. I have an attack of three, and I have my roll again, draw, uh, discard this card to draw two. I'm going to do that. I'm going to discard to draw two new cards from my hero deck, not my build pile. They're both defense cards. That's not going to help me much. Okay, so I'm just going to take a look at what I do have here. I have a lot of defense, so I'm not getting hurt by this guy. I have three attack. So that means that I have two, 
plus the three. I have five points of damage right here. Then I have this, which doubles my attack, which still only leaves me with five points, or, uh, which doubles the cards, sure. However, that only gets me a ten. I still can't beat him. So, in this case, I would just have to pass. I cannot beat this guy. I would be very, I would regret the fact that I had to discard. So instead, I'll just get these defense cards ready for when he attacks on his turn. Then the healer will go. They will try to attack. And if they do so, great. Let's just say, for the sake of um, the story and time, you know, we end up working together, killing the skeleton. He gets discarded. Now the healer. It's their turn. They will pick one of these two cards and do this action. And uh, so this one, for example, quote a film or TV show. The other heroes must say a different quote from that film, franchise, or TV show. All that participate draw a card. Uh, so we had that one when we played our first game, and it was a Lord of the Rings quote fest. Then it says, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's attack, draw one monster. If it's defense, draw one encounter. If it's a class, draw one treasure. If it's utility, draw that card. And uh, so you would do that uh, and see what it is. Let's say, for example, let's try the healer out and see what we get. Class. So if it's class, draw one treasure. Hey, great. We don't have to find anything. Healer just gets a treasure card. Um, so healer gets... The Amulet of Protection, plus one defense, and it's permanent. Awesome. So Healer will just add that to their character there. And that that card is drawn, so that goes into their hand. You don't have a hand limit again. So there's that. Then you move on to the boss. The level one boss is a Banshee. There's a social. Oh, so there's drinking at the top. This one, you have to do a waterfall. Uh, if you don't know what a waterfall is, good for you. <laughs> if, uh, so, um, so you do that if you want, optional. Social, party embraces their inner Karen. Speak to the manager. All heroes that participate, draw one card. And then the action. Uh, the, uh, this banshee lowers your hero defense by one. And it's for the entire combat. Each time it does, uh, and it, uh, lowers your defense every time it does damage to you. So, uh, you'll go through taking turns killing that. He has two health. Two times two would be four, so he has four health, actually. Because, it's, remember, it's two times the number of players. And here are all the rest of the stats, same as the monster card. So, pretty simple to follow. When the boss dies, everyone gets to level up to their next, to their next level. And, uh... You can then reset your character, reshuffle all of your cards and any new cards that you earned back into your hero deck. Everyone also gets to draw, not draw, choose a class or utility card from their deck and add that uh, from their build pool and add it to their hero deck. And one person... Uh, the party votes on one person to get a an ultimate card. And the ultimate card will go to that per the nominated person's deck as well. And that all gets shuffled together. So this, that's why this game is also called a deck building game, because you will be building out the deck with more and more cards. Now, for level two, you get rid of the cards that you unveiled, discard them, find a level two boss and put that at the top. You replace any uncovered cards and everyone draws a treasure. And then you are all set for level two. You rinse and repeat, you do that four times. When you beat the, uh, the fourth level boss, then you have won the game. And that is the game in a nutshell. Let's get back to the table to talk about what we thought. Okay, so that's how the game plays. And uh, yeah, not, not that bad at all. Uh, what do you think of it? I loved it. I don't remember much. <laughs> 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 we made, this game 
uh, it, it goes so fast and it's so much fun. It feels like it's going fast. And then your husband says, should we stop after three rounds because you've been playing for two hours? And, and we're like, oh, what's <laughs> crap, really? Uh, it's fun. The entire time we were just enjoying ourselves. And so just all the socials that we had, like the socials cards, we did that. We did the action, and then we did uh -huh. the drinking. We did yeah, all we did of all it. of it. Yeah, all of it, and we did, everybody did a social. Like nobody did not do a social. Well, one we did. Uh, one was a movie quote one, and we talked about Lord of the Rings. And two of the people at the table had not seen Lord of the Rings. Two. One. One. Just one. And so uh, I they could not participate in that. Yeah, Shanna fed them lines. <laughs> My, my moment had come. <laughs> I have been preparing for that day since I was 13 years old. We also did um, not 20 questions, but similar, like, yes or no questions on a movie character. That was um, amazing. I, I was, so I was I the one that pulled that one. Name, but I like, knew exactly who it was. But I was like, oh, he has this great line. Anywho, we also did the staring contest, which I did not choose Dan for because I would have lost. Yeah. So I made sure not to choose him. We also got to be our inner Karens for our socials. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I learned what a waterfall is when drinking. Yes. I did not know what that was. <laughs> I believe I mentioned that in um, the run through of the game. I'm pretty sure I mentioned like, you're going to learn what this is if you haven't already. <laughs> yeah. Like I said. Because that pops up a lot. <laughs> I know we won, but I don't remember winning. <laughs> I don't remember how. <laughs> so uh how do you feel about everything being card based like not worrying about wooden tokens and stuff to track your health um i loved everything i thought it was really easy having your own play hand and having play clank and stuff where you build your your deck like mm -hmm, i understood mm -hmm. this really easily um i did think that the keeping track of your heart so your life could get more difficult the more you do waterfalls <laughs> so yep <laughs> I mean, bring bring a quarter or a dime to use. You know, bring bring your own change. I that, guess that is one thing. <laughs> that is one thing where uh, this game is all about fun. It's not so much about the mechanics and making sure everything's right. Oh yeah, no. even uh, the designer. Because if you have followed our show, our channel, you know that we've interviewed him. Uh, he said, like you know, that's this game is just about you know be hanging out with friends, having stories, and having a good time. <laughs> Uh, and that really shines through with this. Oh, it's yeah. just, you know, like, uh, if a couple times I couldn't find a rule until, you know, I looked at the rule book like three times and for whatever reason I couldn't find it the first two times. But so we just like house ruled it until I found the actual rule. I think finding the rules got harder um, the more waterfalls. <laughs> <laughs> But even so, like, the game is always fun, it, regardless yeah. of how you play, you know? Well, we, if, we played it, and then nobody wanted to play a different game after because, like, the mood was so high that I didn't want to ruin the mood. Like, this was a fun, positive game that brought an entire table of very yeah. different people together. Yeah. And I do, I love the level of cooperation in mm -hmm. this game. There's no fighting against anybody. It is you fighting monsters only. Yeah, and there's no, like, there's no idea of, well, I could help them, but I really want to build up me. You know, like, there's yeah. none of that in this no. game at all. It's everyone is really helping everyone else. And if you have an understanding of D&D, &D, you understand the different classes. So, like, when I got Rogue, I was like, I know what I'm doing. I'm stealing everything. Got it. <laughs> I'm going to be the first to fight and then hop out of there. So, like, you really understood your class if you played D&D &D, and all of our friends at the table had or had watched people playing D&D &D, in the mm -hmm. case of Angie. Yeah. Um. So that made it easier. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love the pyramid, the pyramid of chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I love the, the the wackiness of some of the art in this. Uh, the booty card, especially, is just so good. Uh, it's so funny. Well, I like how the back sides of the cards are consistent, just different colors. But I still hold the rogue's back color being so like just gray and black scale. I loved it. Like I thought mine was the coolest of all the cards. The rogue really it's does very have. classy. Yeah, and look at that. Really like, that's cool. just classy. Yeah, the back of their card is really neat. Mm -hmm. the, on the flip side, everything is like a purpley color. Purples yeah. and blues. Yeah, I love that. So. I'll play the rogue again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John Joseph. Is that his name? Is? Yeah, John Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only person with the last name I felt like. Uh, I also really like, there's a general rules card, but it has an extra health tracker on the back, which is really nice for the monsters. Yep. You can just use the monster card. Or the boss card to track its health that way. 
which I thought was a really, really nice. Like, I'm really glad that these extra ones were added in there. Right. Deliberately or not, it was fantastic. <laughs> Great job. idea. Yep. Um, I personally loved all the artwork. Uh, I, some people <laughs> have like the, they don't go together. That what well, that makes it perfect in my opinion. Like yeah, it's just it, it it's adds fun. The, to the chaotic nature <laughs> yeah. of this game. But yeah, that is something that some people are going to have an issue with is the artwork. And you might have noticed just as I was like showing the cards off in the uh, playthrough video is the artwork is inconsistent. There are several different artists who worked on the game, but for whatever reason, it works. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it is just a lot of fun. Well, there's so many like inside jokes. Like if you are a nerd, this has every joke. Oh, even if you're of. not a nerd, yeah, even like if you're not, I guess. there's one that's Crocs. <laughs> and you know you think of the shoe but it's actual crocodiles <laughs> and so you know just ridiculous things like that i think the best part was the socials though it really makes you forces you to like loosen up a little bit yeah you know? it's a good way to break people out of their mold yeah but it's still easy yeah yeah it's not a it's not a trick in any way or like it's not it's not like some games that's really forced because again it's all optional mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll well, have to if you don't want to. And they're all so different, too. So, like, one will be, a, like, a staring contest. The next one is everyone <laughs> act like an inner Karen. Like, and we all have our stories. Um, each hero names the worst thing to keep in your mouth while crossing the river. Like, that's just funny. <laughs> and the winner gets to draw their card there. You tell a joke. If anyone laughs, the party draws a card. I would never laugh at any of your jokes because they're dad jokes. But, you know. How dare you. I know. The party does their best mythical monster impression. All heroes that participate draw a card. And it's like, you want to draw a card, so you're going to participate, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, th I thought that was just kind of fun, and it helped you gain your yeah. deck. I like how it never <laughs> penalizes you for it. It's always rewarding you for yeah. doing these things, which is really nice. And I thought that, like, objectively, all the characters were um, very even. Like, they, they had their certain job. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I can hear to slay... I know that as we play that card game more and more, we're going to find which character is the best one to get. Like, which character yeah. with what extra, you know, treasures or whatever are going to make that the best characters to use to fight the dragons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and in and Here to Slay, that is co-op and not co-op. You know, like you are well, going it's not co-op at all. You're going to start all competitive. Well, I worked well with Maria the whole time. <laughs> so you can, you can <laughs> you, choose to be co Because you don't play the game right. <laughs> I played it right. Um, but anyway, but like this is hundred percent, stop that, hundred <laughs> percent cooperative, you know, and you know, mm -hmm. I just think that like everyone has their job. Like we knew to toss off like the major fighting to Dan and then like, you know, give the defense stuff to you, me, have me just hop in real quick and hop back out. You know, like we, we knew and Jack just healed the whole time. Like he didn't do anything else. He just did the healing. Yeah. We didn't expect any fighting out of him. <laughs> so I think that was very, very helpful. Like we, sure. everyone had an important part in the party. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, this is a great game. And so, Eric, congratulations on this game. We love it. Yeah. Good luck on the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to see where it goes. And, uh, and I, I rarely will say, like, you know, everyone go out and buy this game. Yeah. Go out and buy this game. Back this Kickstarter. You will not mm -hmm. regret it. Like, this is the most fun we've had at our table. And we play every board game. We play D&D. &D. We host three podcasts. But, yeah. like, this, this is... it was just a wonderful end. I forget getting up to bed that night. <laughs> it was night. the fastest two hours we've had <laughs> it was in a while. very fast two hours. <laughs> so there's also the Nemesis option, which I said in the review, like, or in my uh, run run through, there are people who will probably never have to use this because this is to make the game harder. But Ooh. for a game that's designed to just be like fun, yeah, people may not ever need it. You know, so, it's cool to have this option. What is it? We never didn't use it. So what's the option? <laughs> so it, it it just adds uh, like. Um, the Greater Troll does double damage against heroes. The Demon Hydra always so goes makes before the, the effective harder. hero. Yeah, it just makes certain well, monsters Let's never harder. play that, because I remember one of the um, side monsters, like not the bosses, almost killed us. And the <laughs> boss was easier than one of the side monsters. I think we just messed up like how we were supposed to fight the darn thing. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> After so many waterfalls. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, even though... After so many waterfalls, we accidentally put a level one monster in we instead did. of or boss instead of level three. That's why it was easier. Okay, oh, this is really easy for one. <laughs> and we're just like, oh, we got this. <laughs> That's not <laughs> it wasn't until after we're like, oh, we put the wrong level. Jump in. change. <laughs> So then maybe the monsters aren't going to be weaker but than the it, bosses if you play the cards right. But again, that, that just goes to show, like, this game is still fun even if you play it wrong. 
<laughs> like it's People still just, just happy on a high note. We killed it easily, guys. <laughs> we did yeah. It. <laughs> But yeah, this is a, it's just a lot of fun. It's, you know, something to, you know, there's a lot of strategy still. You know, it's not some silly little game that, you know, is mindless. Mm -hmm. um, you are going to have to do a lot of thinking in this game, which is real fun when there's a lot of drinking in this game. <laughs> well, and it's nice, too, that, like, you know, it doesn't take up very much space on the table. Mm -hmm. And so we had food out, you know, and people were getting up to make... To coffee um or like getting more drinks and getting food using the restroom and so you, you can leave and come back and you're totally fine but there's no get back here and play this game or else or, oh it's your yeah. turn come on no it was fine the whole time absolutely actually you guys held off the social for me because my time had come with lord of the rings all i heard from the kitchen was wait for shanna she's ready she's got this no, that's yep. all i heard mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like i'm coming my people need me <laughs> so yeah definitely people uh everyone out there uh hit this game up Watch our interview with Eric Lorton also to hear what, you know, what the design process was mm -hmm. like, get an idea for him and what his intentions were for the game. Because I, th I think that really showcases like how you need to approach this game and what to expect from it. Yeah. Fun. When mm -hmm. I see these cards, I smile. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So thanks, everyone. And have a great week. And we'll talk to you next time. Back this game.